we'll just get started. So welcome everyone again. Um, what a great introduction from Raphael to um, get, put some context around what Mr. Yoshino and and I are here to talk about, and uh, it's been such an honor for me to get to know Mr. Yoshino over the last five years, and not only um, professionally, but now personally as well. And I was a lean practitioner when I moved to Japan, and the level of knowledge and the depth of, I guess, the just the, the, the depth behind the principles that I had long been taught, I, I have a new appreciation, and I'm really thrilled to be able to share them with you here. And I'm trying to figure out how to provide, sorry, this is a new thing for me here. All right, here we go. So we already did our introductions. Um, and what's really thrilling is just a few weeks ago, we announced the, the book that is coming out in July. I'll have more information at the end. And you should be able to pre-order it actually next week. And it contains all of the, the stories that we're going to talk, touch on a bit here today. And, and what's really exciting is you're going to get to hear from uh, Mr. Yoshino today from his own perspective about these experiences. Uh, and this is a picture of me. It was exactly well, a few weeks ago was the five year anniversary of me first meeting up with Mr. Yoshino. This is my husband here um, in, in Nagoya. We had just moved to Japan for my husband's job, actually, but I was very excited. Uh, for the opportunity for myself and I made my husband take the day off of work and we went down um, and met up with Mr. Yoshino and he took us to Toyota City. I thought it was going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity and little did I know that I would um, be leading study trips to Japan and writing the book with Mr. Yoshino five years later. Mm -hmm. uh, we, met, we would meet up regularly in his office and talk. I would jump on the bullet train and now we collaborate around the world. And Raphael showed this picture earlier. Uh, it was it was really fun to you know because of the blog I started writing when I was living in Japan I thought it was a really uh, unique opportunity for me as a uh, lean practitioner to be living in Japan and I wanted to share that knowledge with other people which is why I um, started writing the blog and so it was great that Raphael reached out saying I'm going to be in Japan uh, we met up in Nagoya which is where I introduced him to Mr Yoshino and they've developed a relationship and then we had this is dinner in Tokyo a few days later. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the, the output of this um, collaboration, Mr. Yoshino and I have been working with intention and purpose for the last two years to capture his stories and insights from over 40 years. Uh, and I'm going to ask him a question now because one of the big themes of our experience of working on this book together is the concept of Hansei, of reflection and of learning. And Raphael touched on this earlier, uh, I can say this morning, but wherever you are, whatever time zone you're on, <laughs> earlier about how, um, how learning never ends. And Mr. Yoshino has really uh, reflected on that for himself, that he's learning and relearning more about his life through the process of being asked questions and, uh, and thinking. Please, uh, Mr. Yoshino, I want to turn this over to you. Yeah. And, yes. and on what are some of your reflections about the process of working on um, this book together? Well, actually, a um, long time ago, just Katie uh, was talking about her idea to write a book about Toyota. And uh, then I was asked to, to have an interview. And then through all those interviews, he just she wants to get some all the history through one person. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, uh, when I we talk about it, you know, I don't remember not so many things which is now included in the book because you know there are so many bad memories, so many so many miserable memories <laughs> I ran into while I was working on Toyota. Good things and bad things. It's a mixture, and bad things I just wanted to forget about it. I don't want to keep it. I don't want to remember that. So I did not dig down all those bad memories. However. While we are talking, Katie and I are talking about about all those questions, talking about all those, you know, book content. I found out that we can learn so many things, good things, from the failure, from from the unhappy ending, or from uh, or the bad situation. We can learn so many things. At the same time, we can learn very little from the success stories. So, I found out that okay, this. Book writing, uh, it, it requires a lot of interviewing. So maybe this is going to be a very, very exciting one, one year, one and a half year. Be, 
receiving interviews. So uh, this is great learning experience for me again. And uh, the, all the things, all the memories who, who were, you know, hid, hidden somewhere. And I don't even remember that <laughs> I just uh, did it. But still, he, she keeps asking me so details, keep asking me why. Why is that? So, so that is a very good opportunity for me to look back and, and uh, try to try my best to look back. Then, I if I dig down uh, again on just like a farming, dig down again and find out that oh, this is what happened. So this is a great learning experience. So uh, uh, in the book, you will, if you buy a book, you will notice that this is a story of my life within Toyota, but it's not my personal life, doesn't matter. It's not so important. So uh, this is a great learning. And I also looking back and reviewing or doing a or looking back what you have done or you have not done is a very, very great source of the new energy which can be generated within you. Mm. It's been a really special experience. Uh, Mr. Yoshino and I were uh, running through the slides just so he had an overview of the, the context. And he said, I, I'm not saying things exactly the same way as I said them before. And I said, no, it's, it's great because the nuances and the, the small differences of memory or expression, I, I learn something new from that every time too. And so I, uh, I think that's the beauty of of memory and conversation is it's not always exactly the same um, and you uncover different elements at different times, but it, we can't keep putting more things in the book. So <laughs> that, that's, that's why these webinars are great. Um, so th thank you. Uh, Rafa, could you, do I need to put the slides back on? Yeah. How do I shift back to that? Oh, great, thank you. I, one of my realizations through this process is, and I, I knew this before, so I, again, it's just the richness of understanding that's happened through my experience of living in Japan and, and really through my relationship with Mr. Yoshino as well, is that reflection is not the, is the beginning, it's not the end of learning. So, you know, we, we do a plan, do, study, adjust cycle. It's actually, we start with the adjustment. We start with the reflection, the learning, and then we move forward and create. And so, um, similarly, a book's never, you know, it's just one point in time of reflections to then how do we use that information and thinking to help us move forward into the future and, um, and, and keep learning. I also wanted to share with you, oh, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. One of my large Barumas here. Um, I, I got this in Japan a year ago. And it actually has the word intention on it. I have a very large Daruma collection. There's a, there's a saying in Japanese, a proverb, and Raphael shared one earlier, fall down seven times, get up eight. And I really, uh, this, this, this proverb meant a lot to me over the, the last few years of um, working towards a goal. And Darumas are weighted at the bottom. It's about having a goal and then it's falling down and getting back up to achieve your goal. Uh, is that we're gonna have challenges and failures along the way, but it's about getting up and persevering. Mr. Rich, you know, I was, it would be great for the audience to hear from your perspective um, what this Japanese proverb has meant to you in your life. Well, actually, you know, fall down seven times and getting up eight. That means, well, seven does not necessarily mean seven or eight or six. Seven is many numbers. See, not one, one time, two times. Seven is many opportunities. So uh, seven, four, seven, uh, seven times. That means if you fail seven times, don't get depressed. That means seven times, ten times, many, many times. Don't get depressed because you have a, it's a you. It, it, things will turn turn right to better one. So don't you know give give it up. So that is a, a very very important lesson that we need to keep in mind. And so you know in, in our life there are so many things happen, good things, bad things happen, and so it's so important to get back. I don't know why seven times, four seven times, and getting up. Uh, eight. So what, what's the difference between seven and eight? Because, you, <laughs> but you know, probably, you know, seven, again, it, it's many numbers, yeah. big numbers. And also it tells us, the, tell us a very important lesson that, you know, whatever happens to you, bad things, but still don't lose your hope because as long as you are serious about your future, about your endeavor, then things will pick up. And actually I learned from my own experience, this happens to me. 
in, in my case, maybe 13, four, seven, 13 times <laughs> and uh, giving back uh, 14 or 15. So this is really true. So this is one of the most, you know, uh, appreciated uh, proverb in Japan. And Never of course, it comes yeah. from um, China. Everything comes from China, including <laughs> coronavirus. But <laughs> this is, and this is one of the things that come from China. Yeah. It's this about, is a fantastic yeah. message. This one from the actual That's time. Right. I, I think in this, and you mentioned the pandemic. I think that it now more than ever, this this uh, sense of how do we get up and keep moving forward is really important. Yeah, but this is a fantastic message from these complicated times. Eh? Really. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's going to be hard times for a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. We will get up. Yeah, All right. Sure. Mm. Share the slides, please. Yeah. Great. Um, I also want to share this, this word of intention that's been really important to me. It actually, I, just, I got this personally inscribed with that same kanji. You can see it there uh, when I was by the monks in Japan. When I when I got business cards made in Japan five years ago, I had already started my own company, but I didn't have a business logo. So I said, put the words for uh, for intention on my card because it's a word that means uh, means a lot to me. And I learned that this uh, the lower part of the symbol on the left means heart, and the one on the right means direction. And it came to take a new sort of deeper nuance for me on what the word intention is. And, I'm, and the reason I'm sharing this is because it's also important for us to think about as leaders and as learners, um, what's really important to us, what's important inside as people and then as leaders of people, what are we, what are we trying to accomplish and that has meaning here? And then how do we align our actions and our behaviors in that direction? And so it's creating awareness for ourselves of purpose and heart. And you'll hear that, uh, that sense of this throughout uh, our discussion here today that leading with the heart is really important. And then how do you have sense of direction and where you're going as well and, and to connect those two. Mm -hmm. So I just want to offer that as well. It's really important for us to have the connection of heart and direction. Okay. Uh, and I included this, this quote, because I've learned a lot from Mr. Yoshino about what respect means. We hear, you know, of course, that, uh, you know, respect for people and continuous improvement are the two pillars of the Toyota way. Uh, but respect has a really deeper meaning at, uh, for Toyota people. And I wanted Mr. Yoshino to talk about that with, uh, with you here, because it's been, uh, it's been really enlightening for me too, the, the, the deeper nuances of what this respect really means. Um, Mr. Yoshino, I turn it over to you. Yeah. In terms of what what this pillar of respect for people really really embodies at Toyota? Well, actually, the as far as I remember, the first time well, not necessarily first time, but actually almost the first time I heard about this word respect uh, and the comment in the top management. I, I think it was around 2001 when Toyota Way, which is a new, not necessarily new, but another comment, key comment from top management came out. And uh, so respect means, but there are, just like uh, Katie said, the respect means a little bit deeper than it looks. And it, so it, it, within Toyota, we have a slightly different uh, 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 meaning uh, keep in mind. And uh, usually, you know, respect uh, is, uh, is considered to be, sometimes considered to be just nice to be everybody. Or boss, you know, if it, it talks about the bosses, respected boss needs to treat people nice and then the, being nice to everyone working for him or uh, superficially nice or something like that. But within Toyota, the respect means a little bit deeper. And one of the things is everybody is different. Everybody has a different character, different way of thinking, different code, personal code, different values. So. Uh, uh, the people who are the top of the of the group, and uh, you have so many people, then you have to value each person's dif you know difference, and each person's value. And there is no one only one value, but there are so many values. So that is so important. That is part of respect. And another thing is that you know the people are very very important because uh, it's it's not machine that makes cars, but it's who handles the machine? People. And the people always make sure that the machine works fine all the time. So maintenance, all the, you know, take care of the machine. P 
people without people so we cannot make good quality cars so people are so important so uh, it's so important we just we spend eight uh, more than eight hours a day so you spend more hours they spend more hours than they spend uh, with their families so uh, we have to treat them just like a family members and so uh, people um, we have to make people feel happy working in the same place for more than eight hours so also and people have different opinion, different idea, and probably if you are a boss, then people have know much much better than the, their work because the boss is not doing making cars, but workers just actually making cars. So they have lots of lots of new ideas. So they like to be heard. So they are enjoying to be heard, to enjoy the feeling that they are heard. So bosses always has to ask people has to make sure that they you know all the people's good idea is heard so that is part of the respect and also taking care of the people means develop help develop themselves so all those things are just one word respect so respect is not only one you know uh, a thing from lower rank people toward uh, uh, upper people it's not it's so different from regular meaning. So that's why the meaning of respect 2001 and Mr. Cho, uh, uh, President Cho wanted to point it out is that we don't, are not supposed to forget this very, very hardcore meaning underneath this word, only just, just only one word, but there are so many meanings about it. So that is uh, the very basic co uh, concept behind this, uh, this uh, small, tiny word. Mm. Yes. One of the things that I, I learned from you, and this is in the book too, about how uh, there are two meanings of the word respect in, in Japanese. So we have, in, as it translates to English, we just have the word respect, but there's two symbols for respect in Japanese. One is uh, like respect to a senior person, and it's like direct respect to one pe person, or there's respect right. for humanity and for humanness. And that is mm -hmm. the respect for people that's included in, uh, in the Toyota way 2001, and that's a very different nuance than we we often think of. Just respect is oh, I'm you know, I'm respecting you as an individual. No, this is I'm respecting you for hu your humanity, and that as a as a different mm. picture, yeah. uh, different mm. meaning. And so, absolutely, um, it's really powerful. I actually realized just how I have my um my Toyota pen from the <laughs> uh, in the back of this it says good thinking, good product, and so that's that right. that's that really good. shows that um. Toyota leads with thinking about people first and then the product. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. Fantastic lean with my leadership mnemonic, yeah? listening, the yeah. most important point. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we're going to make it here. All right, great, thank you. Okay, so uh, taking a step back in time, almost six years ago was the first time I actually even had really heard of um, Isao Yoshino. Of course, I had read um, and used Managing to Learn, which is the book about A3 thinking that John Shook had written. Um, and Mr. Yoshino is uh, credited in the acknowledgement there as the person who taught John Shook about A3 thinking along with um, another manager that had reported to Mr. Yoshino. Uh, I was at a conference and this was right a few weeks after we found out we were moving to Japan. And it was just serendipity and luck that Mr. Yoshino happened to be in town as well. And he was up on stage with John Shook and this is uh, just after this is when we first met and he gave me his business card and said, look me up. But I was so taken by both um, Mr. Yoshino's warmth and humor on the stage. And uh, I'll let him, you can, dem he'll demonstrate that for you here to himself. But also, and also his profound, profound thinking and introspection. And he doesn't remember saying this, but it has struck me yeah. so profoundly and has become really uh, my personal guide on how I think about leadership and also how I coach and teach other people. And he said something to this effect that my aim to develop John Shook as his manager was giving him a mission or target and supporting him while he figured out how to reach the target. And as I was developing John, I was aware that I was developing myself as well. And I, this is so profound to me. And we're going to dig into these three concepts here today. And I'll let Mr. Yoshino speak for himself about what these elements really mean to him as a leader. Um, but I took that as the simple things we can remember. A leader's role is to set the direction, to provide support, and to develop yourself. And if we can do all three of these, we are going to achieve great people-centered leadership in a culture of learning that's really connected with the heart um, and in that direction as well. 
So the first is um, the studying the direction. And uh, I'm, I have a lot to say about targets and setting directions as well, but I really want you to hear from uh, Mr. Yoshino on this. And I've, uh, it's been really great reminder to me about uh, the, not just the importance of targets, but how to think about setting targets and, um, and, and what that means as a leader. And often in the West, we, we forget about how important having clear targets and direction is. At Toyota, it's a given. Um, and I want Mr. Yoshino to talk about how uh, something I've learned from him is to set a seemingly impossible target. And the way I take that as target to be determined by what is needed, not what's achievable. Uh, Mr. You talk more about this this comment that you say often to me that targets should be seemingly impossible. Why do you say that? Well, actually, if uh, the target is very easy to attain, that then you don't. If you are an expert on something, then you don't have to work so hard. Hmm. But target is something. What that are, uh, one thing, but another is the target is given as uh, it is, should come from the need, not hmm. from what what you can do. So need come from somewhere else, not from you. So uh, target is something, it's just like a North Star, and you have, everybody, you have to bring everybody's attention toward one same goal. And uh, talking about the target, you know, uh, let me give you very quickly about how, what was my target, because I was in charge of the training uh, program of the new me, which is a joint venture between GM and Toyota. And new me is a joint venture. And uh, in California in 18, 1984, and at the time, you know, I was given, uh, I was, uh, I was assigned to uh, that training program. And at the time, you know, the target, I was wondering, uh, okay, new me, uh, top management decided to send their shop floor uh, leaders to Japan for three weeks for training because uh, the all the operation is run by Toyota style. See, and Toyota has offered all those manufacturing and uh, capable manufacturing equipment, all those okay. techniques and management, while GM offered the facility. So that is the condition. And anyway, so I was wondering what is the, what is the target of that new me president? And it was they they decided to send their uh, shop floor uh, leaders, and they want to change the new me workers' mindset and also. Uh, a culture, you know, shop floor culture from GM days to, to to Toyota, the new style. They wanted to change. They want to see the cultural change, and so that's why they send it to us. Then I was wondering, what is my target as as a as a section manager of the training course? And uh, I was wondering. So we are supposed to change their culture within only three weeks of training in Japan. We cannot. So what, what we just discussed a little bit when we start a program, so we discussed among us, what is our target? What is our team's target? What can we do? What is the target uh, to begin with? Then we came up, you know, new means a president says, we want to change the culture. Then my target is to not to change the culture. We cannot do that. However, we would like to provide every single opportunities to the shop leaders, shop floor leaders, to experience by themselves and uh, knee deep in the Toyota culture, and they um, they uh, learn something, and they will bring back one or two key things that they would like to apply when they come back in Fremont, California. That is my goal. So uh, it, it doesn't it no need to directly you know, uh, change the culture, but it, all those, you know, uh, uh, their determination and each person has, I want to do this. I want to apply this small thing into my shop floor. As long as they, each person, each, each time that we receive 30 people. So each time all those 30 people have their own personal goals to bring back to California, then that the, the target is attained. So the, Target is something like that, and um, some people say that it's 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 kind of stupid target. You know, mm -hmm. how can you just uh, evaluate? I don't know, but it's as long as they set the target by themselves. So for workers, we did not force them. They decided voluntarily decided. Okay, this is my goal, and because at the end of the of the entire course, we ask them what is your target to attain when we are back in California, and we formally informally ask them. So that was really. You know, uh, um, 
each person has different. So 30 people have different target, but that is fine. As long as they set a target, that is our target. Mm -hmm. So uh, target, you, we are not supposed to consider target is more complicated and sophisticated one. No, target, as long as we have some target, that is good. That is a good place to start. Yeah. And so no need to be to set up a very, very complicated target, sophisticated target, then you, you cannot continue. So we, we believe the target is something like that. Yeah. So uh, no target, no good. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. target is fine. It's kind of <laughs> stupid target, that's fine. As long mm -hmm. as you have some target. Based mm -hmm. on that, set, after setting a target, you can develop action plans to reach the target. If you don't have a target, you cannot come, come up with any action plans because there's no no way, no 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 star. Uh, so it's so that is how what target means to us. I don't, but but it in this combination that we've talked about that it's a seemingly impossible target, but don't also, oh, okay. no no but also oh. the, no two things because you I what I've learned from you too is but also not to get hung up on just trying to figure out the target. You you need a target that's directional and then you will learn and you can do your PBCA cycles because if you spend all your trying to kind, kind, time trying to come up with the perfect target, then you're never taking action. So I loved your story about, mm -hmm. yes, you need to have a challenge target sort of on the big level, but you also need a target that's just gonna help you move forward and to learn. And so, mm -hmm. so I think that's a really wonderful experience you shared here. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's so important because seemingly impossible target or uh, almost impossible, same thing. But mm -hmm. again, target is determined by the need of mm -hmm. your workplace. It's not your choice, but its choice is, is, is given by the market or by the need. So mm -hmm. it should be, so sometimes it's too difficult to attain. However, it's a target. Otherwise <laughs> you, you cannot survive. So uh, mm. if you set easy to accomplish target, then um, it, it doesn't help you to develop. So target is come from the need necessity. Yeah. And, uh, but sometimes it's so far away then, even though you cannot attain the target within a certain period of time, it's okay because you set a target and you step forward one year, two years, second years. So you can step, phase the approach, you can do that. As long as you set the target, then you can bind every, everybody's effort together into one direction. So setting without setting a target, you cannot bind everybody's attention. No, everybody goes in the to totally different, different uh, uh, directions. So uh, ha having a target is so important. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that's how we should start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does it make okay. sense? Oh, great, Rafa, yeah. did, did you have something you wanted to add to that? Yeah, yeah, let me, let me, let me show you one, one thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's regarding, it's regarding the, 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 the four P of the model I, I've, I've showed you, you know, but, but uh, 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 I, I don't find it. I don't find it at the moment. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's in here. Sorry. You know, uh, 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 even 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 Yoshino, you know, the, the four P of, of, of the model, you know, is the priority. Is the is the is that we cannot uh, we cannot eat an elephant in one day and even in one week. Yeah. Uh, and, and and imagine in 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 Toyota they are using housing country. Uh, it, it's not in here. I don't want to show uh, uh, Isao Yoshino's Hoshin Kanri, but even Isao now, uh, he's he's been retired from Toyota like to, uh, 15 years ago, and he's still having a plan. He's still having a plan with his targets, with his action plans, with his strategies, and he's writing it in one piece of paper, you know, so... So imagine, imagine how, how important it is for for Toyota people. How important it is for 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 Isao. Even 15 years later, he's he's using the same approach that he was using in Toyota. Yeah? So, okay. very good point. Thank, thanks, Rafa. Can you bring me back to the the slide, please? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, and this also. You know, it follows on from what Mr. Yoshino said. It's one of the reasons we want that challenge targets because 
It's what we learn by not achieving the target um, that makes us smarter. This harkens back to what he said earlier today is that you know we learn more from our failures than from our successes. So, and that's one of the reasons. And then also, in addition, so a leader, we need to set that challenge for people, set a target, um, help them move towards something that's going to allow them to learn. But we also need to nurture and support them. So this is where also another connection between that direction and the heart. And so something I think Mr. Yoshino is just really special at is the supporting other people and developing them and, uh, and really helping people improve and solve their own problems. And there are a few things that I wanted that would be great for him to share with you here. There's so many stories um, mm -hmm. and so they're all in the book so you can get that, but just the flavor of hearing him tell them. And his role as a leader was to help each other, uh, help others develop themselves. And that's just so clear on his, um, his purpose in life. Uh, so one of the, there's so many different ways that we can help support people. I pulled out of just a few ways that we have talked about. And one is that, um, as I would say, is to set the conditions for success and take responsibility when mistakes happen. And Mr. Yoshino talks about how important this is at Toyota's, cult of Toyota's culture about allowing mistakes and supporting mistakes. And uh, again, it's where that learning comes from. And there's a really powerful story um, that he has, and I'm going to let him tell part of it sure. here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell part of it here. It, uh, he actually had not, it came out in one of our very first interviews. Uh, two years ago when we started talking about the very beginning of his, his career. And he remembered the story. I, Mr. Yoshino, I remember you. You were like, oh my gosh, I had this experience and realizing what a um, important ground, like foundational ex event this was for him on his whole Toyota career. Uh, it was an experience he had when, in his orientation, um, multi-month orientation at Toyota when he was assigned to the Modimachi uh, paint shop to do some work. And uh, Mr. Yoshino, I'll let you tell the story to people about the big mistake you made. Okay. Well, when the college graduate, when we joined Toyota, we just go through maybe four or five months of training period as an orientation. And uh, during that time, I was at uh, the first, uh, first couple of weeks, I was at orientation and, and in the classroom. Then we, each of us are sent to the plant because we are car manufacturers. So I was sent to the Motomachi plant where, uh, um, where the small size car manufacturer, I was assigned to the paint shop, but I was not painting the car, but it, it required a lot of skill. So I was sent to the paint preparation, you know, paint mixture and uh, in the storage. And uh, then we, I, we send that paint, um, mixed paint, uh, through the pipe all, all over to the paint shop. So I was supposed to put the uh, paint into the big tank. But at the time, uh, there was two kinds of paint. One is a paint, and another one is solvent. Uh, uh, these days, uh, we have only one kind, but at the time, two kinds, paint and solvent, we have to put together into one uh, one tank. Then I was supposed to put paint A and solvent A um, one time in, in one big container and uh, put it put the switch on, then it's a mix, mix up and then it automatically sent to the paint shop. And I, I thought I, I did the right way. Then maybe a couple of hours later, the one of the one of the foreman just rushing to our, you know, paint pre preparation uh, storage and uh, oh, okay, you guys, something is wrong in, in the car. The, the paint does not stay, stick to the car. Something is wrong, bubble. And so uh, then they asked me, uh, so wh what did you do that? How did you do that? So, oh, yeah, yes, sir, I just put this paint A and paint and solvent A. But when I look at closely at it, then I put solvent B, it's a different solvent I put it in the tank, but it's the paint can was sitting on the same area. So, but I was scared because I screw up and uh, they just, all the bosses that came in and oh, okay, this is a kind of problem. So I was so scared. They're gonna fire me or they're gonna, you know, I was mm. so scared. Then they did not just, they did not blame me, but oh, okay, so you mix up because the paint A and solvent B is sitting on almost very close with each other. It's not your fault because anybody can make mistakes. You're just newcomer. So you're not familiar, you did not do that. So uh, instead of blaming me, 
they just try to find out what should we done should we we have that we should have done that and so they instead of blaming me they just discuss about what should be done to prevent from the same thing from happening again and big boss later came came to me you know uh, sorry for what happens but thank you very much for making mistakes because this give us a chance to correct it to make kaizen on how to prevent from the same problem happening again so i was so satisfied i was so lucky not, not so lucky but i was so uh, i feel very comfortable okay this is a culture of toyota people and uh, this is a, this is not only the paint shop this we call it you know we make a mistake so uh, bad news first type of culture is prevailing across the company so when something happens bad news comes first should come first so bad news will bring the good better idea so mm -hmm. nobody is blamed because we make mistakes we are, we are human so that is that is one of the many good aspects of Toyota's mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. and I was so so fascinated with this great culture which we can never find anywhere else in the world well, not in the world, but in Japan. Now, so what struck me in that story is about how we, your manager is, you had hundreds of cars that need to be repainted and they thanked you for making a mistake. And um, I, I can't imagine that happening in many other companies as well either. So mm. it's, a, it's a really powerful story. And uh, for those of you listening here today too, this concept of how Toyota has embodied that at all levels of leadership, this um, supporting people and uh, through failure and mistakes to carry through um, the arc of Mr. Yoshino's experience, both from him as a leader, but also um, even bigger experiences of failures um, that we won't talk about here today because it's a very in-depth story, but uh, a failure at the end of his career too and how the, the leaders mm -hmm. really own that mistake as well. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back, to keep yeah. going through. And then we'll have some time for some questions. I have right. shared with you, I have shared with you a, a quote in, in, in the chat regarding Isal's story. You know, that the problem, the thing yeah. is always on the processes. You know, the important thing is the process, not the people. Yeah. People can make mistakes. Of course, we are going to have mistakes. But if we have, if we had the perfect process, it wouldn't happen. And the process, the perfect process is almost impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a way. Yeah. And there's another uh, experience that really struck me too um, from Mr. Yoshino, maybe about 10 years later, Mr. Yoshino was talking about how um, he was in a different role in the Tokyo office. And this really um, in, in struck me about how leaders also, when they're supporting people, one of your roles is to teach the process of learning. So leaders don't own the actual learning process, uh, the actual learning, but how do they create the, the structures and systems for people to learn? Uh, and Mr. Yoshino had a great experience of this when he was asked to write a report for the senior boss at the Tokyo office um, and was basically, uh, well, I'll let him tell the story. So Mr. Yoshino, tell, if you can tell people about what happened when you were asked to write this report and you decided not to go to Gemba. Oh, okay. Well, actually it was uh, around uh, 1972, 73, it's oil, right after the oil crisis and uh, all over the world, in Japan too. And at the time, I was in the public relations department in Tokyo office, right in the middle of Tokyo. And I have to deal with the uh, press people, you know, uh, writers, everything. So it's uh, media people. And so we have to, um, and uh, under the situation of that oil crisis, we have to establish, Toyota has needs to establish some uh, very positive, uh, uh, you know, a strategy how to cope with the situation. So the bo big boss in the Tokyo office wanted to uh, wanted to know what other top leaders of Japanese corporation, what kind of strategy, uh, public relations uh, strategy they they have uh, in these days. So he asked me, Yoshino, why don't you? So you were working in the public relations. So why don't you just check? Why don't you make a quick research of other major? Uh, companies like Hitachi, Mitsubishi, and, and uh, Toshiba, or, or the Panasonic, and the Nissan, or other uh, key companies, what kind of uh, um, a public relations strategy they are developing in order to cope with this very fast-moving situation. So I was assigned to that, 
the job. But I was so busy taking care of all those media people. So I just check only from the library. At the time, there was no computer, no, no internet. So I just check all the documents in, in our library, small library. Also, just across the street, uh, there was one of the largest uh, library in, uh, in that area. So I went over there and pick up some of the documents, some of the books about all those uh, public relations, uh, the organization chart and all those policies. I just went through that and make a very quick A3 A uh, report. And uh, then uh, it was a timing that for me to the report to them with all the maybe 10 or 12 uh, managers and other bystanders. And then I, I started, I was about to start reporting to them. Then the big boss just asked me, by the way, you know, just where did you get this information? And then, uh, yes, sir, just, I just, uh, I was so busy. And so I just uh, went to uh, all the libraries and I believe it's a very important and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big data. So I just learned, I just get all those data from the book, from other, all the, all the newspapers and everything. So then he, he asked me, okay, we are now based in Tokyo. You can go to all those companies within 10 minutes taxi drive. You can even walk to some of the companies, but you haven't gone there yet. No, sir. Then he said, he stopped me and, okay, uh, you haven't done that. What do you need to do? You didn't go to Gimba. Just right there, you can talk to the people and uh, hear their voice, real voice. Then you can sense um, all those key things behind their words. But you didn't do that. Why don't you come back? I will give you one, one or ten days. Then why don't you do that again and go to Gimba and come back to me? And so... I was in the middle, I was uh, so embarrassed because I did not, you know, I was, uh, I, I did a good job in summarizing all these things, but it's not what he wanted to see. So uh, then to make a long story short, I just came back maybe a week or 10 days later and luckily, not luckily, but all the, uh, I, all the information I received directly from face-to-face -face interviews uh, from all those uh, couple of companies and uh, all the information is same as my re original report, which I got it from the library. However, it is not what you know he would like to see. He wanted me to go to those companies, go to the Gimba, talk to the people, and uh, and uh, share you know, exchange views. Through that conversation, you can sense what what they are. They believe is important in the public relations section. So he wanted me. He expect me to do that first before establishing all those A3. So go, go to Gemba, go, go to Gemba concept is not only for the plant, but also from the office workers too. That is one of the things he wanted to teach me. So I was so happy that his name is Mr. Fuse. Fuse is a, he's a managing director. And I was so uh, satisfied, not embarrassed, but at the same time satisfied that he just gave me a chance to go to Gimba again, and which I learned when I was in the Motomachi plant, but I totally forgotten. So this is one of the things that I learned. Go to Gimba is, is really important to any area. That because only the truth come from the facts. I used all the documents as an assumption because I did not check, double check with face-to-face -face conversation. So this is, it is still, you know, tells me a lesson that if you want to find out the real truth, then you have to go real, go back to those original place and and uh, and uh, uh, check it by yourself. That is a lesson I really learned. So that my life in a Tokyo office in five years is really, really uh, uh, meaningful. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I thought it was pretty impressive when, you know, that, that you told me as well um, that this manager he said, "Oh, I didn't expect you to have anything different. Like I was, I didn't actually care what you found out. I wanted you to go to Gemba, and so he was really caring about how learning that process of how to be a good learner and a good leader um, was the most important thing that he was leading with. Uh, so yeah. really, really great. Probably, uh, probably uh, Katie, there's th some questions. Probably you could mix all three in one questions." Regarding, but probably Isao cannot hear, listen to me. Probably, if you can ask him regarding if he sees a process regarding managerial skills 
and about short-term thinking and, and about uh, acting as coaches, managers in Toyota and the rest of the world. I don't know if Yoshino can... So I'd like to just frame that Mr. Yoshino will have a hard time talking about things that are happening in current day at Toyota and other... Um, yeah. and other he can talk about his experiences and the, con the, the sort of the, the concepts of, of what it means to be a, a people-centered leader. Um, I, I, he won't. He will have a harder time um, talking about what's currently happening in Toyota or other companies yeah. as well. Because he, he's not there in Gemba himself. Um, mm. I, I do think there's some great questions in here. We just have a few more points, and maybe we can just finish those stories and then come back okay, to the questions. Okay, perfect, perfect, yeah. Mm. Um, so thank you. And I do, I do want to just let people know, like asking about questions that are things that are happening today in your companies or trends um, are typically not as uh, as easy for him to have some yeah. insight into. Yeah. Uh, so then one other thing, we, and this, Rafael, you, you talked about this earlier about how important it is for leaders to be curious, ask questions and to listen. Um, mm -hmm. And part of that's letting people learn. And Mr. Yoshino still goes and visits his, his mentor who's in his 80s in um, outside of uh, Tokyo, and um, Mr. Yoshino learned the importance of asking questions from this um, from this leader, Mr. Sugura. And Mr. Yoshino, just want maybe share just a one one short thing about how this this concept of being curious and asking questions is really important as a leader to help support um, others. I see. You know, uh, when I was working, uh, my, my my mentor and my boss, and his name is Mr. Sugura. And when I started working for him, I was so impressed with by the way he asked questions. One time, you know, he he wanted to go to the technical center and he wanted to meet a big shot. And uh, then he asked me, so, well, Yoshino, why don't you join me? Because it's going to be interesting because we have never you know, talked to all those big shots. So maybe it's going to be a big chance. Then I, while I was listening beside him, how he just asked those questions, he's very good because two, uh, you know, two a very eloquent or to uh, you know positive and also it, the person who talks a lot then it's not too difficult because you just try to you just kick off something then then you just start something then automatically those guys would like to share all his his comment everything but when, when in, in case that very quiet guy, in, many of the engineers are very quiet, but very, very, you know, big heart, but strong mind, he said, but they are, they are not so much uh, uh, speakers. But sometimes Mr. Sugura is just, you know, uh, just beating around the bush and they try to warm up and just maybe first five minutes talking about so many things. And so ask questions, simple questions. Then he just asks another question and they, they, from the different angle, and so, so that uh, the guy, quiet guy, feel very happy and feel comfortable with the pace and everything. So, Mr. Sugura just knows mm. how to ask a question in a very, very nice manner, so that people feel very comfortable to speak up. So I learned so many things, and also learned that Mr. Sugura is he, my mentor. He is so nice to ask me to join, and uh, because he wanted to me to learn how to ask questions to the people who are so busy and they want to save some time, but still they they spare the 30 or 40 minutes to talk to us. So uh, so I learned so many things. You know, it's not just like a TV announcer, but he's, he talks like a country gentleman, but the very, very, you know, skillful. And also he just get into their heart mindset, make them feel good to speak up. And so, but it is a very great experience to listen to uh, uh, the, the people. So, uh, uh, it's not that eloquent people is not necessarily a good speaker. But Mr. Segura speaks slow and speaks just uh, softly. But he is he grabs very key things, and in order to get it, he just asks many many questions. Then, right after he the guy he warms up, then he just asks right to the center. So it's amazing, just like just like you you is a hunted fox in the in the forest. Uh, so it's it's very very interesting the way he asks questions. Also, he that is his style to coach his people, including me. So I always try to be nice and try to make people feel happy working uh, in that environment. So uh, I was impressed. I I still I believe that he's one of the best mentor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you highlight something that you've talked about a lot about this uh, chain of learning that happens at Toyota about the, the mentorship that leaders have in coaching and developing. We're hearing that through all um, all different stories that you had and then how you've, you've been embodying that as well. Um, with one more point on, on developing people, and then I think we can, uh, and we'll close with about uh, the importance of learning, and then we'll go to some of these questions that are coming in here. Uh, Rafael, will you put the slides back on and then we'll, uh, yeah. All right, and then uh, just one more point on on this is that Mr. I, well, I learned from Mr. You know, and he, he doesn't use these words exactly, but you need to go to Gemba to show that you care. And there's a nuance of this. It's not just going to see facts um, and validating that, but it's, you know, Mr. Cho says, go see, ask why, show respect. And this is something that uh, Mr. Yoshino really learned for himself as well about developing that human connection. Um, it's not by just respecting the person, but uh, of individually. But what, can you tell us a little bit more about that? And then we'll, we'll shift into some questions in a moment. Well, actually, when I, again, back in the maybe early 70s, when I was in the Motomachi plant, and uh, then I, I was busy. My, my job was to make all the arrangements for the model change of a car. You know, the car has a big model change every four or five years. And then I was in charge of that uh, uh, Cressida, which is, uh, which is a mid-sized car. And at the time I was so busy. And so I work on all those paperwork to pass all the key information, the model change information from the technical division to the plant. So uh, it's so important to to pre do precisely. So uh, in the morning, I, I was, I'm so busy to just check all the key information changes to to write it down and uh, bring it to the shop floor. So uh, in the morning, I work on all the desk work. In the afternoon, I try my best to just go come down to the shop floor, go to Gimba and talk to the foreman, talk to the group leader, team leaders in charge. And of course, it is necessary to do so to, to keep the communication. At the same time, talking to them face to face, you can you can feel what they are thinking, whether they are happy working on that, what is their major problem they are facing right now. All those things, if you stay there for more than 30 minutes talking uh, talking about so many things, then it, it's they feel very happy that to, uh, for me to come down from shop from, uh, from the office down there instead of se se sending it by mail company mail but I just come to bring myself over there so they feel so happy to receive uh, the young guy coming and stay there and talking and listening so uh, I'm just to see things uh, uh, in front of me but at the same time uh, I I succeeded in getting to know it all those key people more deeply and at the same time they know about me so which is very very important for me because uh, i i was so convinced that all oh, with these great people that's why we make good cars we don't cheat yeah. just like other companies we don't cheat they don't cheat so uh, i i learned all these the personality and everything not only the job related things but they talk about their family, they talk about the friend, they talk about the background, they talk about the hometown. So uh, it's very, very nice to, mm -hmm. to create any good, good you know, rapport, good relations with them. So that is one of the things I learned. I was younger, but I learned so many things. The people mindset, I think, was developed in me when I was in the Motomachi plant. Yeah, it's the, the, that human connection of the heart. That's now, right. Uh, and on a point, the, the sixth point, so going back to the leader's role is also to always develop yourself. And you can see in Mr. Yoshino tells stories about this, of his leaders developing themselves. And um, there's some great things about this CONPRO program, which um, it, we, weren't, we aren't touching in here. Uh, but I want you to just reflect on this, and then we'll go to some of the questions about why as a leader is it important to both help being other people lead and learn, but also for yourself to be learning as, as well. Actually, leaders, leaders are not supposed to know everything. You know, leaders, decision, the president, also the executives, their major role is to make important decisions, to make sure that people are working safely and, and more efficiently. So they don't have to know everything on what's happened on the shop floor. So you, they just, you know, assign all the works to the people down there. So. Uh, it's it's a it's trust is based, 
and uh, so uh, and also we make mistakes and it's 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 a very very common understanding we make mistakes so we always uh, sh should be ready to find a problem and to take some countermeasures to improve it that is a, a ongoing process it's not one time so because we make mistakes even though we don't want to so that type of concept always uh, prepare for the worst prepare for mistakes and prepare that we are not supposed to believe we are perfect we are always making mistakes even though we don't want to so always improvement or kaizen mindset is very very important and always if we fail to keep it then we will fail anything everything so and you know the one of the key comments coming from the uh, uh, chairman of AG Toyota is that I, I still remember that if you are content with what you are then it that's the beginning of the corruption so mm -hmm. he said that comment when Toyota is growing so fast and to become number one in the number one and number two in the world at that time maybe people can be so happy and oh we are the best but uh, no, Mr. AG Toyota said okay mm -hmm. you guys we have to be careful not to be too happy because you know we still we are still on the eighth steps of, of the ten steps so we are still eight we have two more steps to go to the to the perfect situation so we are not supposed to be too happy so that kind of a concept is in a prevail across a company so we always keep learning we are not you know uh, we are not you know, we, we are we are the best so uh, that's why that is one of the key concepts which we don't talk about it so often but we can sense because mm -hmm. big shot is so serious about it we have to think prepare for the worst we have to prepare for some mistakes so uh, uh, that is the concept is passed down from top management to the next uh, layer then all the way come down to the young people like me so uh, i can sense it so uh, that is is not you know not well known in the world but that is one of the very very key factors what makes toyota as it is and sometimes it's not a number but mindset and readiness and also uh the the the, the care about the people working for them so all those invisible things and it's difficult to explain but all those things which you cannot see but you can sense it and that is part of the many, many great secret of Toyota's success, I believe. Yes, mm -hmm. you once told me the only secret to Toyota is its attitude towards learning. And I think that really encompasses everything we've talked here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I wanna leave some time for, actually I have that quote in here too, where is it the, uh, doo -doo -doo. yeah, here we go. The only, the only secret to Toyota is attitude towards learning and its attitude towards people. So let's uh, go into some of these questions. Thank you, Mr. Yoshino. And we can uh, see, there was a question here I thought was uh, interesting that you might be able to comment on about the concept of shuhari and um, you know, the, uh, about learn, how, how to learn in a sort of an apprenticeship model and how that, how you think of that concept as it relates to how you were learning and leading at Toyota. Uh, say it again. What is what is the question? You know, the, the shuhari, the the C one do what like the C one uh, do one master one uh, concept that came out of the martial arts. That's sort of foundational to um, to process. a lot of culture. Do you maybe you don't you're not familiar with that yourself? Um, no. So I'll, I'll phrase that a different way. Um, oh. One time we had talked about uh, how. Uh, Coaching is a bit like learning how to make sushi and the, the apprenticeship model that happens with learning by observing, learning by doing, and then learning by, um, by mastering. And how, how has that concept been something that, uh, that you've taken with you as you have been learning or developing other people at Toyota as well? Sort of, um, yeah. I see. Well, it's, you know, the within Toyota you know learning come from your own experience if you learn you feel like you learn oh, I learned something very completely it, when you uh, you read all the 160 pages of book and you just understand everything then you feel like oh I understand everything 
but it's not complete unless you put it into practice or into some of the real thing apply to real thing and check whether your learning is is it really works or not so action plans the so learning something is not is one way but put it into practice and make sure that you really really great learning by doing it and, and double checking whether you learn it and knee deep so that is that is the concept of of our learning and mm. uh, i don't know whether that is uh, the right answer to your question but it's always you know i wanted to action and uh, not only the theory so always we do something instead of think instead of, of feel but the feeling or think is happens in your mindset but uh, action you have to you have to use your your hands and legs and everything. You have to move around. Yeah. So that is the only way we can learn something. And uh, and also you through through talking. If you learn something, you believe you learn something, then you have to express in your own word. Mm -hmm. Then you can tell. That is exactly what I'm coaching to my student to my university. And uh, so in my university, just I always try to encourage people to speak up and I, I, I advise them don't try to be perfect don't try to be nice just that, whatever comes to your mind speak up and uh, and I, I don't you know I don't stop it but just speak up just it's so important mm -hmm. and that is a that is a culture that I was raised so sometimes I make stupid comments but people don't laugh with it Toyota <laughs> they don't laugh it because it's oh he's he's a little bit different yeah. But, uh, you know, 10 people have different opinions. He's one of them. So it's very, very nice, nice culture that uh, um, um, always try to be different, not, not different, try to be uh, um, put into practice and, uh, and make sure that your learning is, is, uh, is uh, sturdy and your learning is right. And, uh, mm. you know, go to Gemba is the same concept. Go to Gemba, double check what you have learned in the book, make sure you look at it, touch it, and feel it. Then your learning is not necessarily completed, but is, is reached the, closely to the reality. Thank you. Uh, Matt Weir asked an uh, interesting question. He worked at Toyota as well. And given that you've had experience in Toyota across many different um, places, so you worked at Toyota in Japan, and then you worked at Toyota in the US, and then for Toyota Motor Sales, in the U.S. for the remaining about 10 years of your career. Uh, I think you can uh, have some interesting insights into this. He asks about um, Toyota's efforts to close the gap or to, trick, to teach its thinking and culture um, in other cultures. So he, I'm sorry, I'll just read this. He's reflecting about Toyota's effort to share um, its culture uh, and attributes there continues to be some short-term thinking organizations that that, ha that don't have Toyota's mindset. And I know you had that experience too with Toyota Motor Sales. And I'm wondering if maybe you can comment on, um, what, you know, what do you think would have helped to have a greater nice. impact to, to, to really teach that culture to these other organizations? Nice. Well, actually, yeah. I yeah, after you know, so many uh, years working at uh, Toyota City, where Toyota's very, very down to earth culture started, then I just went to Los Angeles, California, and I stayed there uh, for 10 years. So, totally different culture and different people working there, even though the, the company name is uh, start with Toyota, but totally different culture. I'm not saying it's good or bad, different culture, different people, different business, different work environment, different target, different customers. So uh, it's so different. Then I was struggling with my partner because he was raised in the totally different culture. I, I was raised in different culture, but we are partners, we work together. So always, always conflict. So what I did is that you know I just, he has he his style is so different my style is so different uh, I would like him to to do a little bit about my own style too as well as his style so what I did is that I try to show it I try to show it uh, always get go to go to game by type of concept or always try to go back to the real um real oh, I cannot see you. 
uh, yeah, I don't know. You're still there. If just if you keep talking, oh, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, so what I did is that in order to convince him by talking, but I just try to do things by my by myself and show that what uh, my comment was right by doing things by the going to Gemba and make sure that my comment was right or wrong. Always go to Gemba or go to to the people instead of talking on the phone but go to go to the place in the next building and talk to them and exchange views and bring back all those key information and it's slightly different from from the fact that you 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 hear from the telephone or emails so always try to do show it and uh, my attitude and try to convince not convince try to show it to my partner then it took so many years for him to to change his style a little bit and you cannot change people overnight because once you just grown up in one culture it's almost difficult but it's not impossible but it's possible and uh, as long as you're patient and you stick to your own style and uh, and mm -hmm. show that the the, the go to game by concept or uh, you know and also respect people type of this key concept really works to anybody so uh, i always try to 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 show it uh, by my own style and uh, then he witnessed me the way I do that, the way just every time I, I I need to to find something that I go there next building and walk maybe 15 minutes walk to the the across the street and to other department and ask them, and instead he, in in his case he just he just called them on the phone. Oh, okay, I understand. Then he makes decision by only the telephone conversation. Instead, I just go there and and uh, talk to them and, and see all those data and everything. So I, sh I was showing, I, I showed, and I don't know how much he could learn, but uh, I believe I made a small influence to my partner. That's and uh, so, yeah, so uh, of course it does not change his style and uh, totally, but I believe he started to seriously think about uh, just getting closer to my style a little bit. I could sense it from time to time so that was that was what i tried to do so you cannot change people overnight particularly when it comes to the mentality no it's impossible so mm. but still there is something you can do it and so it's just go to game but type concept is more broader meaning yeah. i don't know whether that is the answer to your question but that comes to my mind thank mm. you thank you and we're, we're we're almost out of time so i want to thank you so much okay. Mr. You know for sharing your experiences i wanted to let people know how they can find out more about the book there's a link that i put in here and then there's a link here um next week we should have the pre-order up on um, on amazon and there's a lot more information about the book on this website here learning to lead leading to learn um so and then of course in another time you can uh, join us in japan and just continue to have the dialogue um there's so many rich stories that mr yoshino didn't touch on in the book especially um, touching on Matt's comment there about how do you how do you create this culture and there's some stories of success about Numi and some stories of failure um, in a water ski boat venture that Mr. Yoshino led. And so there's a lot of richness that um, of learning about success and failure and and developing culture in the book there. So thank you, thank you so much everyone. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Katie. Thank you yeah, very thank much. Thank you very much. Michelle. Hey, I will. I will do. I will do a final. A final survey. Yes, one minute. Final survey. Just for everyone that is still in the in the in the room. Okay, please uh, uh, do the final survey. Just to know if you like it. If you don't like it, evaluation. If you like the the model. Eh? If you would like to participate in future events or webinars. Or even in the in the future Japanese study missions to Japan, yeah. I have I have also sent you my email and my Twitter account in there just to to keep in touch with all of you. And I fully recommend you uh, to to participate in the launch team of the of Katie's book. Yeah, that is going to be. I'm 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 anxious to read it. I'm anxious to read it, uh -huh. Katie. Yeah. So thank you very much for for your time. Thank you very much, Isel, for your... Great, and we'll, uh, 
there will be other opportunities and hope you can be involved in some other pre-launch activities uh, with webinars and podcasts and mm -hmm. uh, with your, your content. Um, I also had some other content that I didn't share here. And um, if you go to my website, you can see some of that information there as well. So, okay, JT, and we have pending to to do a, a common okay, Japanese mission, American and Spanish yeah. or Euro European. That right. some, sometimes I've done it. This hopefully right. this year we can do it together. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank Good night. Thank you okay. very much. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Good night. Peace out. Good night. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Mr. Yoshino. Thank you, Mr. Bye. Thank Mr. you, Rafa. Thank Bye. you.